Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to a new video. For those of you who have never watched our channel, check it out. We're doing snack sticks today. But if this is the first time on the channel, hit that subscribe button. I'm with my girlfriend Bridget. She's hey. been uh, begging me to do snack sticks again since for, we did them a couple years ago. For two years I've been <laughs> begging them. Literally like every other weekend like, hey, can we smoke some snack Let's sticks? do some snack sticks. So we're finally doing it. We broke down the kitchen and made ourselves a nice little stainless steel table out of aluminum foil. Earlier today, I built my new Camp Chef woodwind smoker, or the woodwind pellet grill, whatever you want to call it. And now we're gonna do snack sticks. So for any of you guys who have never done snack sticks, this will be a great informative video on showing you what you need and how to do it. So real quick, let's just walk through the items I have here on the table and the items that you'll need to do snack sticks by yourself. So first off, you need meat. I have a whole tub right here of ground mule deer meat. This is from a deer I shot a couple years ago. Is this deer? This is mule deer doe. And then over there I have mule deer buck. Yeah, look at this. She's that not lying sure. that she just wants to make snack sticks. And a lot of them. This is all I want to eat. She really enjoyed them, so did I. And I'm excited that we're actually going to do it again. So we both have a tub full of deer meat. And you're going to need a couple mixing bowls. We just grabbed those at the dollar store today. You're going to need some jerky seasoning and cure. So we have a bunch of different flavors. Let me show you what we have. We have mandarin teriyaki, hickory blend, pepper blend, sweet and spicy, the hunter's blend, and the mesquite blend. You're gonna want some seasonings and you're gonna need some way to shoot out the snack sticks. This is like snack sticks on a budget, but we've got this right here. Uh, so what you do is you fill this tube up full of meat. I've got a little bit of olive oil in there. Put that in there and you got two nozzles with the one that we bought. And you can see the nozzle is shaped in just a thin, like a rectangular shape. With this one, you can do either snack sticks. So this will be like a round snack stick, similar to like a sausage. And you can either do it with a casing or without. I'm actually gonna try it without today. And Bridget is gonna do it with the casing. So we have this one right here from LEM, it's a 20, 21 millimeter. All the directions are right here. This comes with the little box. It'll tell you exactly how much seasoning that you need and how much cure that you need per pound of meat, the measurement cups. A scale, I'm gonna probably do two to three pound batches. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys can learn a tip or two and uh, you guys can do this at home someday, so. Let's get to it. It's official, I just weighed my stack of meat. I have 10 total pounds. So on this little chart, it only goes up to four. The last thing I wanna do is make a bad ratio and a bad batch of meat. So I'm gonna do two flavors of four pounds each. I'm gonna do a sweet and spicy teriyaki and then probably just two pounds of peppered. So first things first, get four pounds of this into here. Oh, beautiful. What do you got? Four pounds. Really? Perfect. I need four pounds. We're getting close. 4.028. For four pounds of meat, you need three tablespoons and one teaspoon of seasoning. Three tablespoons of that. Here's the fun part. Get your hands dirty. So I'm just going to mix this really well. I'm going to take a couple minutes doing it with both my hands. And then after that, we'll move on to the next flavor. Well, the directions uh, say that you can add up to a quarter cup of water. So Bridget and I both are gonna put just a little bit of water in there. And it says it helps. What does it say? Because the cure acts as a binder. So a little bit of water. Basically, we're gonna repeat that same step. So that's pretty much all you guys need to see. Make sure you follow the directions and do, the, uh, um, do exactly what it calls for. I think that will make the best snack sticks. We have all the meat is mixed. I took out a section of the casing and I just cut it and I tied a knot. I noticed the smaller sections are a little easier to work with. So I've got that going. I'm just gonna load the tube up with the meat and then we're gonna use the jerky gun to uh, fill it up in this sucker. I had a system that worked so good. But like I said, we're just gonna have to figure it out. When it's all said and done, your tube should be full of meat. Look just like that. You gotta insert the pointy end first. Set it inside there. 
just like a caulking gun. It's full of meat right there, but if I give it a couple squeezes, it's gonna start to come out the, uh, the pointy end. So, you're gonna take your casing, like so, stick it over the top, and with this system, you really gotta hold the casing tight, and you want to let that meat fill the casing, and I'll kind of control the pressure with my thumb right there. So if you watch, squeeze, and you can just shoot this whole tube of meat right through there. And that's exactly how it's gonna look. Isn't that looks cool? Looks like you figured it out already. Yeah, I'll get the hang of it. So there's still plenty of casing. I'm just gonna reload the gun and we'll finish it off. Oh, we're at the end. When you're at the end like that, what I do is just take a little bit of it out. Just enough to twist and make another knot at the end. Doesn't need to be much. Should look like that when you're done. And I've seen some people that'll take them in, you know, eight to 10 inch lengths, twist them, and then just fold that over on top of itself. Last year we did some like just straight and then we did some like in a circle. And we kind of did it like this, allowing air uh, and space around each section of it. So I'm not sure how we're gonna do this batch, but for the next little while, we're just gonna shoot the casings full. All right, we're moving on to Bridget's deer meat. I like to get that thing going, get it started, get all the air out and get the meat right to the edge. And he's really smooth with it now. Yeah, we're getting, getting back to where I was last time. He's a natural. The only problem is I have to have Bridget hold that down because this thing, for whatever reason, is crooked to where the tube just won't stay put. I think we're missing a piece or something. Something's not right. Definitely going to have to invest in a better one next time. This one's poverty. <laughs> <laughs> Snack sticks on a butt. Poverty gun. Just like that, so, um, yeah, you can see when we're done, we just basically start over. Bridget has to pull that out. She fills it up, and then uh, this is all her sticks right here. So, I definitely got these ones a little tighter than the first go around. You can see some of this is loose, but honestly, it should cook about the same. Yeah. It ends up shrinking and Heck, it all tastes the same, but you can see we're making a lot of a lot of progress on this batch compared to the very very first set. So we'll finish hers. I don't know if we're going to have enough casing um, to get all of it done, but we can do some natural jerky sticks or the you know tube jerky sticks with this if she wants to. All right, guys, welcome back. It's a new day, and uh, we're going to finish these snack sticks. I promise. So. We had the snack sticks that we shot into the casings. They've been refrigerated overnight. We don't have enough to finish that. And anyways, I've been wanting to try some of the more natural style jerky. So we have probably about 10 to 12 pounds of meat still to work with. And what we're gonna do is use these jerky trays. These fit perfectly inside the woodwind. So these are kind of an accessory to the woodwind pellet grill. You can see there's actually three different sizes. So if you stack them up like that, there's three different sizes. The shortest one is going to be your top rack. The middle is the middle rack, and then this is the bottom rack. All right, here's the fun part, getting your hands messy again. I could probably hydrate some of this meat again using water, but you know what? I'm just ready to get this program started. If anybody has any tips on how to do this faster and cleaner, I would love some advice. Here we go. So these racks, are, they slide in this way. So I'm just going to do as many of these as I can and fill up this whole thing. Again, you don't want them to be touching. You want each jerky stick to kind of have free flow of air all the way around. This is my first time doing this. So let's see what we can come up with. 
Hmm. Not bad. Just try to straighten them out a little bit. So we're just gonna go one at a time, guys. We gotta fill up every single tray, just like so. That actually works really good. I'm just using the the actual grooves on the tray to steer me in a straight line, and then just squeezing as needed. That's the best way to do it, really. tray is done. I'm not gonna lie, for the doing it for the first time, I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Inside joke with Martin. But anyways guys, all we are going to do is repeat the process on uh, the other two trays. We completely filled the racks. I still have about two pounds, so there's definitely gonna be another batch going. We still have all the, the sausage style snack sticks to go, but this is gonna be our first batch Top shelf, middle shelf, bottom shelf. So let's go load it up. We got the Camp Chef set on the low smoke setting. I had it on 175, but it was kind of hot. So I'm gonna start with low smoke for maybe one or two hours, and then uh, I might turn it back up. But for now, we're gonna start with the low smoke setting. Oh man, this is gonna be good. We're gonna throw that in on low smoke. It's 150 degrees right now. I'm gonna let that cook for two hours. Well, we're two hours into this. I'm still cooking on low smoke, and that's kept it around 150 to 155, which is good to start it out with. But after two hours, I'm gonna check the temperature, and I'm actually gonna boost the uh, temperature up a little bit. But let's check these bottom ones. You want the meat to be 165 degrees internal temperature I like a dead dead space in there so hit the probe that's 165 it says yeah that one's only 150 just doesn't seem right I feel like it's gonna need a little more time those don't feel good. Still a little soft in there. exactly where you want them. So those are done. These I would imagine are done as well because they're much thinner. So we're gonna take these off and bring them inside. From here all we're gonna do is just cut them. So these ones you're gonna want to trim the edges. I know they get pretty dry and pretty sharp. We'll trim the edges of those, cut them into about eight inch lengths. And then what we'll do is I'll be able to put them in uh, the food saver, vacuum seal them, and uh, freeze them if needed. I know I'm gonna go through these a lot. I'm gonna use these on my hunts, my hikes, everything we do this summer. And basically give some out to friends and just enjoy them. But that's how you make snack sticks. The process from here on out is basically to let them cool, cut them into the sections you want, and package them. So that's pretty much it. From start to finish, how to make your own snack sticks at home using wild game. This would be the same process whether it was beef, elk, buffalo, etc. But like I said earlier, this is all mule deer. So giving them a try. That's good. That, that is probably the one that looked the most cooked I was worried about. But it's still really good. I'm gonna give these a try. Bust a chunk off of that. And let's see. Martin, give that a try. Taste test. Mmm. So like soft and... The ones with the casings are probably soft. Yeah, huh? these are really soft. 
These ones have a little more texture to them. Man, these are way good though. So check it out. The ones in the casings did turn out to be a, quite a bit thicker. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah. Hmm. Maybe a hickory? I don't know. I think this one is I one had. that Bridget did. Yeah. But anyways, guys, these are great. These are awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you learned a tip or two. If you guys have any suggestions, because I am sure there are going to be some of you that have done this before. Give me some uh, tips and tricks. I'm definitely, uh, I love to be critiqued, and I'd like to know if you guys have some ideas for me. So now that you saw me do it from start to scratch, what would you do different? But anyways, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button, and we'll catch you guys on the next video.